Hey everyone, welcome to another Tuesday Tech Tip here at 45 Drives. So uh, I hope a lot of you watched last week's, which I think you did because we got a lot of good feedback from it. Uh, Chris came on, showed his face, gave a little, uh, little background story of, of uh, his side of the, the camera and uh, asked what everyone wants to hear about this year. So we heard that and we got a great response from all kinds of people, everything more about Ceph and even expanding it further. So really, really excited to see that you guys are excited. So thank you for that. So uh, this week, we're just going to start off easy and start crossing things off that list of questions. So one of the first questions that came in was, does Ceph have send receive like ZFS uh, to a different host somewhere else? Or does that data just have to be air synced? I thought that was a great question and uh, pretty, uh, pretty good low hanging fruit to start the year off with. So. Uh, Let's get into it. Okay, so uh, does Ceph have send receive much like ZFS does? So quick little primer for everyone who doesn't know about ZFS send receive. One of the really cool features of ZFS, the uh, ZFS file system, is the ability to literally just up and send a data set or a directory, um, that's what you can think of it, to another ZFS pool somewhere else. So if you want to copy data, you don't have to send the files over. You literally just go, hey, you data set, go over there, please. And you send it from the sender, and you receive it on the receiver. And it's a really, really clean kind of, um, it's just a really clean way to move data around. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why we love ZFS here for backing things up. So great question that someone asked, does Ceph do the same thing? So as always, I have to prime this. Remember, Ceph does three ways to access your data. It does CephFS uh, file system. It does object access either through its uh, uh, native APIs or more commonly through S3 gateways or uh, RBD block devices. So we'll leave S3. That's a little, that's out of the scope of the answer to this. So we're not going to talk about that right now. You asked, uh, so does it just have to be air synced? So we'll start with CephFS because you're talking file system this way. So um, there is now a native tool in CephFS as a version uh, Pacific. Uh, that's version 16 of Ceph. Um, that's called CephFS mirroring. And what it is is it's snapshot mirroring. So essentially, yes, it works just like send and receive. There's no kind of ad hoc command for just firing it over. It's a daemon that runs in the background. So what you would do as an administrator is you'd go to your computer, uh, boom, 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 set it all up. And uh, what goes down there is you can set it at the directory level. You can do it at subdir, you can do it at the top level, you can kind of pick and choose. And the caveat to this CephFS mirroring, this native feature in uh, the latest version of Ceph, is that you must send it to another CephFS cluster. So that might be the, the, the um, the catch for someone, because what if they just want to send some of their data somewhere else that may not be a, a, a Ceph cluster and it's just a POSIX compliant file system? Well, to do that, we have built a tool here that we've talked about before called Ceph GeoRep. And what that is, is essentially a layer on top of our sync that uh, intelligently and efficiently searches through the Ceph file system tree and only sends off the stuff it finds changed. It doesn't tell our sync to do it. It goes and finds the changes and then uses our sync to fire them off somewhere else. What's cool about this one is that you can send these files anywhere. You can send them to any POSIX compliant file system that has our sync on the receiving end. The only caveat to this is it doesn't function like send and receive. You're not sending a whole snapshot. You're sending a live, you're sending from a snapshot, but it's sending file by file rather than like a kind of block of it, if that's the sound effect of that. Um, anyway, so that's how you would do it with CephFS. You'd use CephFS mirroring which is the most like send and receive, but you need a receiving Ceph cluster on the other end to do that. Or you can use Ceph GeoRep and send from CephFS to any POSIX compliant file system that has our sync on the other end, but it sends file by file rather than a whole kind of block. Different sound effect that time. Um, you know, we keep it interesting here. Uh, I'll close this off with, you didn't really ask about this, but would it wouldn't be a tech tip if we didn't go uh, a little outside of um, spec. Uh, RBDs. So RBD in Ceph, remember, is the Rados block device and what it is is it's a, um, a, a network attached block device, uh, much like you would iSCSI or something like that. Um, RBD does have a very similar function to send and receive. They call it import export. 
Um, as you can kind of see, export is very similar to send and import is very similar to receive. And the actual command line syntax, if you, if you saw the command uh, as you will in the B-roll, you would just go RBD send uh, the, the image you wanted, it's not send, export, to standard out and then you can pipe that and SCP it over network to somewhere else. Again, you would have to do that to another Ceph cluster. To go RBD export to RBD import, you'd have to have commands that understood that on both ends. What's cool about that too is maybe you just want to send these image files somewhere safe. You could just export it to an image file and then sync that off somewhere else. So that's how send and receive is done with things like Ceph. All right, so that was that. That was a quick overview of, of how you can send and receive ZFS style in Ceph. Um, I hope, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it answered your question. If it didn't, uh, let us know. We will expand. And uh, thanks, for, thanks again for watching. Thanks again, more importantly, for watching last week's video. Thanks for engaging. Tell us exactly what you guys want. Um, and, uh, well, stay tuned.